Steve, thanks for joining us. Today we'd like to learn more about intrusive thoughts. So it'd be great to start with your background, your specialty, and learn a little bit about your inspiration for how you got involved. I would listen to people talk about these very kind of upsetting intrusive thoughts that seem so irrational to me. These were very intelligent people, and yet they were acting in such a, a bizarre way and expressing fear over thoughts that I had myself similar ones, and yet they were reacting to these thoughts as if there was something terribly wrong. I started looking into what, what must be going on here that these people are having such strong reactions to things that they realized were kind of irrational and unnecessarily burdensome. So you said you yourself have intrusive thoughts. Sure. A lot of people have intrusive thoughts. Yeah. Can you define intrusive thoughts for us and, and what that might mean in context of someone with OCD? Rather than using the phrase intrusive thoughts, I prefer uh, the phrase creative associations. Uh, as I said, I give my brain a lot of license to generate these associations that are no different from the associations that my patients come in with. The difference is that when my patients have these associations, their brain reacts to them as if there's a crisis going on. So when I have an intrusive thought or a creative association, I literally just sort of thank my brain for sharing the experience of the heebie-jeebies lasts no more than two seconds, and I just kind of go on with my day. Persons with OCD, you know, have this kind of avalanche of distress that in their efforts to seek relief from, it actually creates a vicious cycle that reinforces to the brain the idea that there is something actually wrong, there actually is a crisis going on, you know, it turns into a kind of life-altering, very handicapping condition. Mm -hmm. And so with respect to the types of intrusive thoughts, you had mentioned a mother who might be afraid that she's going to suffocate her newborn baby. What are some other examples of common types of intrusive thoughts? So the, the big three in OCD are about violence, uh, the idea that we might act in a way harmful to others or ourselves in some loss of control. Some people think that they've committed some violent act and they spend a great deal of time researching or contemplating whether or not that moment might have happened, while other people think that they might be capable of committing a violent act, and so they might stay away from knives or sharp objects. So the second most popular theme is related to sex, and so persons often will have thoughts that they might find underage children uh, sexual. And the third subset is religion. Persons might have thoughts that they might say something negative about God or something negative about Jesus or Mary, uh, and then they feel an overwhelming sense of, of guilt or anxiety that they might be in danger. So due to the nature of intrusive thoughts, the types of thoughts, do they speak to someone's character? Tragically, this is probably one of the, the greatest misnomers about OCD, is that people are so tempted to react as if they, they have some meaning about a person's you know, inner character, and yet nothing could be further from the truth. If a patient came in and was spiking about being attracted to children sexually, I often tell them uh, that I'd be happy to leave them in a room with either of my two children for a week. And I say to them, at the end of that week, you'd be in a lot more danger than my children would be. Because it's generally almost the exact opposite in terms of a person's character the targets of the spike theme are really just a fabrication of the malfunctioning brain and there's no authentic belief system within the person related to those associations.